You're listening to the We're Not Fine podcast with Doug Jensen and Dr. Talia Jackson. Welcome back, everybody. Happy, happy new year. Happy new Woo-hoo! year. 2023. Wait, did you say 2024? <laughs> Oh my did god, I, I skipped a year. I skipped am I year. Rip Van Winkle? Did I like fall no, asleep it's, and it's wake up a year later? See, no. I, figure, I still look young. I figure if I start thinking it's 2024 or saying 2024, then when I actually start writing the date, <laughs> I'll still write 2023, which would be correct. Because instead of having the always writing the wrong year, I'm trying to I'm trying to, to go another level. For some reason, I've stalled out at 2017 as my go-to year whenever I sign things. So, Greg, where do you write the year? Because we don't write checks really anymore. Well, not write, but type. You know, when you're typing in, <laughs> like you're, you have a signature line that you're you know signing a contract. Or, or do you still write checks because you don't know how to use bill pay? <laughs> no, I don't write checks. So? I actually have to. I actually have to, actually have to order even. some. I don't have any <laughs> around at the moment. I do write like four checks a year. Do you? I do too, probably. No, I don't yeah. anymore. I don't think so. I don't. Since my children have been out of school, I used to write them for school functions, but I don't have that anymore. So, do you, does, does everyone have their New Year's resolutions down? Have you decided what what you're going to commit mm. to this year? I gotta be honest. I think mine are the same every year. Like, I always focus on, and it's so silly because it's like physical fitness. I want to stay in shape. I'm not 20 anymore. So making sure I go to the jujitsu gym on a regular basis, make sure I lift weights at home when I'm in between appointments, um, and just, you know, making sure that I eat the diet that works for me, which as I've grown older seems to be problematic. I don't even know what the hell is happening, but it's really all about health to me. And it's also, by the way, about like making sure that I take that time, like every three months minimum to travel and get the mm. hell out of town and get a change of scenery for a week at least. Like all my, all my clients know that every three months I take time off. And now I'm kind of considering, because we can do telehealth, whether to do a lot of remote time. So it's Ooh. kind of those two things always. Like I want to make sure I travel a shitload, kind of make sure what my plans are. I think it's going to be Italy this year with my kids and our friend. Um, but yeah, it's about let's self-care. How about you I, guys? I think that's, I think that's great. I Thank you. I mean, you know, I've been on my own health journey the last few years. You have. But I feel like um, I want to continue. So my resolutions are continuing stuff that I started in July, mm. you know, with the gym or other things that I've modified in the later part of 2022. And so I, my goals are partially just continuing and keeping going with that. And then also, um, you know, professionally, I've got other goals that I've set for myself for the, for this year that, um, are milestones, you know, that I want to achieve. And then personally, you know, I started focusing yes. on dating and, and things. How's a that bit. going, Greg? And yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> you never want to talk about that. You feel really avoidant to me. Yeah. 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 I no, ask it every time. You ask avoidant it every time. Attachment. Yeah. But I, I still want to focus on that journey. And so that's, that's a new one I'm introducing this year that didn't exist, um, in, you know, in 2022. Um, and only is, you know, again, continuing stuff that I've been building on, um, since, you know, the end of, end of the year. I love it. So, I would like you, to Talia? add one, Talia, Uh-oh. before you go, I want to add one because I okay. just realized <laughs> that this podcast should be on my list. You know, oh, yeah. we, t- we took 2022 to kind of figure out how to put these beautiful gray hexagonal <laughs> figures <laughs> behind us. We it figured took out us the entirety of 2022 <laughs> to get these effing uh, you could say fucking. And it took me a long time to realize that I need to put my microphone as far back into my head because my oh, yeah. voice is so loud. Um, and we're, you know, so I think we kind of figured some stuff out, but I want this to get bigger and better. And I want people to write in and ask us everything and anything all the time. So building this podcast is added to my list. I love that. Thank Um, you. Mine are also mental health and physical health related. And I feel like if I had to sum it up, it would be changing my entire 
persona from being the fastest hamster on the hamster wheel that's going nowhere to being the slowest hamster on the hamster wheel and maybe even stepping off the hamster wheel and lying on a beach for long periods of time. I feel like I want to do less. My New Year's resolutions are like doing less and less and less while continuing my beautiful private practice, raising two teenage boys, having a great marriage that takes a lot of work, even if you're married to a great human. And this fabulous podcast. Of course, let's bring it. I'm ready to manifest <laughs> abundance and joy. I and think Talia, you... go ahead. Yes. Well, I was going to say just... it sounds so easy to get off the hamster wheel given so all that you have on your plate. I'm going to crawl off this fucking hamster wheel. You just watch me. And if anyone is wondering who this glowing, glorious, Goldilocks of a brilliant and beautiful human is. This is Leslie Pereira, who her, if I had to tell you about her bio, which I'll do in like three minutes, but all you need to know about her right now is that she's been my best friend since we were 13 years old, 13 years old. And my eldest is 14 and my youngest is 12. So that basically means we were like practically prepubescent and budding. And we have shared a lot of, a lot of experiences together, but she has a lot of wisdom to share about health and habits and wellness. And she actually knows things. So if you are going to tell us about your new year's resolutions, they're actually probably a little more thoughtful and intentional. <laughs> Leslie. Uh, should I go on my new year's resolutions? Yes. You want to hear about mine? I'd well, actually love to know. Yeah. Yes. I, my new year's resolutions are really much like, they're kind of like Talia's where I want more, and more, I call it white space, where Ooh. in my day to day, there's just um, space that's just wide open, where I get to like daydream or do whatever I want, but just like, Whoa. just a lot more um, like non hamstery, not trying to be productive um, in different parts of my day, but just a lot more white space. That's that revolutionary. Sense. That's hard to do, isn't it, Leslie? Um, it's hard to do, but I do feel like when I have white space, I'm so much better when I'm working, like I'm so much more productive and it, I feel like time goes slower too. It's like, I'm a, um, like, I'm like a, um, and I was going to say a mouse, but no, I'm more of an elephant, right? Like when you're a bigger, like when you're an elephant, like time's supposed to go slower. But I feel like when I, oh. um, when I slow down and I, and I break up my day like that, I just feel like I have so much more time in the day, even though I'm taking more time off. Does that require yeah. drinking less coffee? <laughs> Probably. Because maybe if I want to move slower, Cheers. I'm like chugging my coffee and I'm like, I want to move slower and slower <laughs> and slower. I've got an energy drink for you, Talia. I'll pass it through the wall. Oh, that would be so nice. Leslie, that's a so really nice. interesting thing and in that you called it white space is mm -hmm. kind of fascinating. I, like I realize we have a lot to talk about, but, um, mm -hmm. You know, I did that yesterday. I actually took mm -hmm. the day to do nothing because I've had a very busy couple weeks with family matters. And it is amazing how simple it is and yet how critical it was for me to feel replenished mm -hmm. and to feel like I had, I, I like felt normal again. I texted that to Talia yesterday. So I love that idea. Yeah, may we're definitely I, not meant to go, go, go. It's like you need May the... I introduce you as like your actual human professional self? Yes, you may. So, <laughs> Leslie, and we were actually, <laughs> we were in like Berkeley together. You went to like the, you got your master's in public health at Berkeley while I was getting my doctorate in, in almost Berkeley by Berkeley. But you have over 10 years of behavioral health research experience at the Harvard School of Public Health, working on community health programs, like working with people who have really challenging jobs, like 
truckers and construction workers and looking at the health and habits and how to help people lose weight and quit smoking and all of this. So you, and you have three children, you are creating your own beautiful business, helping women with health and habits. Like we want to know everything that you know about (laughs) new year's resolutions, health and habits, like what actually works. But the title of this was going to be new year's resolutions are bullshit. And then Doug's like, but I like New Year's resolutions. I do. Yeah. Well, you know, Doug, when you were telling me before the show about why you like it, I feel like I have a lot of thoughts around that. So maybe you could tell you could start with why you love New Year's resolutions, and then I can I can kind of chime in on that. I would tell love him to. why he's wrong. Okay, that is not the point of this <laughs> podcast. Um, this is what I want to say about it. Like, first of all, you know, as therapists, Talia, you and I work very hard on establishing goals with clients. That's why this is so relevant, right? Like we establish goals with clients, whether it's individual or relationships, and then we help people kind of methodologically figure out like what is underlying and what are the puzzle pieces that make you who you are. So taking a really good look psychodynamically at like all of the life events and all of the life pieces that make people who they are, but then helping people understand how they can get to where they want to go. And so, you know, really one of my first questions to new clients is very much like, you know, if, if this was successful, how would your life be different? Which brings into this like, kind of the, the resolution idea. And the reason I love them, as I told you before, Goldilocks, can I call you that? No, mm-hmm. I will call mm-hmm. you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that permission. Um, is because I love any opportunity we have as human beings to kind of reset, to really take a moment and think like, are we okay with where our life is at? And I think we should be doing that all along the course of a year. But I also think that New Year's is just this very naturally built in time for people to say, where's my life at? What do I want different? What do I need to have different? What would make me a happier person or more content or more successful or healthier mentally, physically, socially, whatever that is. So I love the idea of that reset or that reboot that I think the new year kind of naturally brings to us. But I think that the important part is to be really thoughtful about that. And as I told you before, Leslie, I don't think most people, most human beings on this planet walk around kind of thinking, well, how do I feel about this? What do I really want? Like one of the things I I notice when it comes to relationships is that I don't think people know necessarily what they want. And I think we are so socialized to think we want a certain thing, but we have to be thoughtful about, is that really what we as individuals want? So I love New Year's resolutions because the thoughtfulness process, but then really taking a look. And and Leslie, as you identified all of the pieces of your life and where your commitments are, you know, really methodologically and, and practically taking a look at what's realistic and how can you create that white space given all that you have on your plate. So that's why I love them. So please share your wisdom. Well, I could talk about this for like four hours. There's Let's do it. Everything Greg that you're is saying you is 42 so seconds. fun to think <laughs> about. Um, okay, so I first agree with you, Doug. Um, I don't think um, resolutions are bullshit necessarily. I think that there is just um, an unhelpful way that we go about like making changes in our lives. And I think New Year's resolutions for most people fails because of the way they approach it. So I think first there is like, I think more than anything that, that, that people do is generate the most powerful thing you can do is generate awareness um, about where you're at and where you want to be. I love it. Um, and I think that when you do that, that's like half the battle. And I don't think most people do that. I think most people kind of think about what they, where they want to be, or maybe they're not even thinking about where they want to be, but they're not being real about where they are right now. And I think when you get really real about, okay, here's where I am right now. And here's where I want to be. This is how I, this is what I want in the future for myself. That creates just a forward moving um, momentum already. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think Doug, like what you're saying about just having these times where like the seasons, I love to make this like a seasonal thing where in the seasons, I really like to revisit what's going on in my life, what I'm willing to let go of, what I'm willing to grow into and kind of in thinking about that. And I love having big goals and I love having big dreams for myself. But I think what people, where people get into trouble is that they are too goal oriented. And Mm. I do think goals are kind of bullshit in a lot of ways. Like, yes, there is benefit to goals. But what happens is in the best case scenario, you set a big goal for yourself 
And then you're spending your days on the hamster wheel, running, 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 running to get to that goal. So from when you set the goal to when you reach the goal, you're in a deficit mode because you're thinking that I'm not where I want to be yet. And then when you reach the goal, you get like a little bit of satisfaction for like a day. And then you realize that there's another thing that you want to accomplish. And then you reset the bar. So you're always moving the goalpost and you're not living with a feeling of abundance and like satisfaction of where you are in your life. And so it's possible. And I really hope that people could like think about how they can generate those feelings in their day-to-day lives and make their life like their days about who is the kind of person they want to be, not what is the outcome. So like, If you're the kind of person who exercises regularly, because let's say you want a strong body in the end or whatever, that like, how would that person treat themselves during the day? What kind of processes would that person do? Because how you live each day is how you live your whole fucking life. Yeah. And so that's, that's where the new year's resolution piece, I think um, people are they're they're looking to the future instead of incorporating what they want and having the satisfaction of daily like reaching their goals in a daily way um and that's so there's a lot more i could talk about that and and also how how to maintain changes as well but yeah so Uh, leslie i i understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. but i have strong disagreement with you about goals Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I can't, (laughs) I have a a significant um, disagreement and let let me explain why. So with my coaching clients, they're often frustrated about their current state, where they are today. They're confused about where they want to go and have absolutely no vision about, well, no vision, but it's common for people just to not, not know what what they want to do or what, you know, what they want to achieve next. And through our work, we help develop goals that give them a North Star or something they're working towards, right? And that's a pathway that they can start to focus on so they understand what they can do today. Now, we mitigate some of the concerns you're talking about by developing milestones along the way. So they're working towards something that's concrete, achievable, and that they're working towards this, that milestone is part of this path that they're on. And I feel like if, if people don't have a goal or have a vision of where they're headed, then they're just aimlessly floating around without intention and doesn't necessarily help them with, with today. Where I agree with you though, is to get to these milestones, to get forward movement down the journey you do have to develop those habits. You do have to think about it as a daily commitment, a daily reaffirmation, a daily um, activity to, 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 to get there. Otherwise you will go off the path, right? So it's almost, it's almost that daily affirmation keeps you on the path moving forward, but without milestones, without having a map, or at least where you think you're, you want to head, I feel like people kind of get aim, aimless and frustrated because they, they're not sure what they're, they're they, they lose sight of a why on that. And Doug, I saw you kind of gr- grimace. I'm sure you have something to say on that. I don't necessarily have something to say. You know what I was grimacing about is I, it was like, Leslie, you were talking about this topic. And I think all three of us were like wanting to jump in and yes. like participate in this discussion because it's such a critical discussion that absolutely affects everybody, right? So that's why I think that's what I was laughing at a little bit, Greg, is that I found all three of us like, hey, but what, you know, and wanting to jump in um, because it's such a great conversation. And even Mm -hmm. having the conversation and Greg, you uh, kind of offering an alternative point of view on what goals are and what goal setting benefits are like that discussion is what the richness of this dialogue is for people to really think like what works for them. So, yeah, and I I just want to jump in and Greg, I'm totally agree with you. I think goals actually on my um, wall where I keep my computer is actually a physical map of where I want to be and what I want to like milestones and what I want to accomplish. So I'm full on in support of goals. But the problem what I'm saying is that the the where people a lot of times can end up um, 
feeling in a deficit or not reaching their goals is because they're so focused on the result and the outcome and not the process is what I, what I want to kind of clarify around that. And I think, and I, and I, and I agree with you that there needs to be you know, a huge focus on process because I, I talk about habit building as well. Right. Yep. Um, and, and without that commitment to that, to a process, you won't realize that the goal was wrong in the, in the first place. Right. Cause that process can lead you to change where you want to head. And that's, and that's part of that cycle of understanding and learning and growing as an individual, right? So completely agree with you there. Leslie, the other thing that is so critical about what you just said, like people get to their end goal, maybe like, let's say it's a weight loss of 80 pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it is. When people get there, what you're talking about is, you know, being content and realizing that there isn't always needing to be this constant, um, formation of something more in those categories. I love that idea. Um, and it's a whole, probably another episode of this podcast to talk about like when we, what does contentment look like and when is enough mm -hmm. and when can we let go and have the white space that you referred to before or Talia for you jumping off the hamst hamster wheel <laughs> or the hamster wheel, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued more by that conversation as well, given this dynamic, mm -hmm. but I don't but want so to go like, off let me you try. This is like what I think that you're saying. And so like, for, for instance, when you think about like the habits and the goals or like, if you set a goal for yourself of like, let's just even say losing 80 pounds, that goal is going to keep us in this deficit mindset because we're not where we want to be. We're not where we want to be. And so we're spending time just trying to chase the goal. Whereas if we change that mindset and think about, I want to live a lifestyle that is healthier, that I am going to be loving myself. I'm enough. I'm beautiful as I am. And I'm changing certain things about my life so that my North Star, or like Greg, like you're saying, like these goals, this map, I'm moving in the direction of my North Star, but I'm not like holding my breath until I get there. Like I am enough and, and feeling great as I am now. And so then it feels less like a resolution and more of like a lifestyle change. Yeah. It's not like I'll feel good when. Right. Because then what happens is people get there and they realize they don't feel any different. So yeah. they might have lost the 80 pounds, but they still feel like shit about themselves. Or as people you know, always say, you know, if you move from one location to another, it doesn't make your problems go away. Exactly. You still have to do that underlying work. Yeah. 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 And the other so, thing I just wanted to say too, is there's a, there's, um, there's like understanding what you, like, I think Doug, you talked about this, like really thinking about what do you really, what do you really want versus what do you think you should want? I don't know if I kind of am Ooh. putting that in your mouth or not. Oh, but no, no, no. That's like, exactly I think a it, lot of Leslie. times we have goals that we're like, this is what I should want. And then yeah. we find ways to, um, so we set a goal for ourselves because it's what we think we should want because of like, I don't know what our environment, you know, the people we surround ourselves with or whatever, but it's not like really what we want truly inside. And so then we're going to kind of find ways to um, sidetrack or, you know, sink our own ships ship along the way or you're going to reach the goal and then you're going to go right back to where you were before because it's not doesn't feel like you it doesn't feel like you're in your north star alignment you know i mean mm. leslie you said it exactly right i think that's i think you put it better than i did i think and in, in, in a simple sort of way i think especially when it comes to relationships i have so many people that i you know when they're putting their app together or their profile on some uh dating app I don't think people know what they're looking for or not. They're not clear on what, you know, who it is that gives them chemistry. Um, and so I think we have to do that sort of self inventory in a way that I appreciate you kind of reiterating that. I don't think that happens pervasively in our culture. Mm -hmm. We are so socialized to think whether it's how much money we make or how much, what we live in or what clothes we have or what relationship we're in. Fuck mm -hmm. all of that. Like let's look internally and figure out who we are. So Doug, Doug, you kind of bring up an interesting point. Um, I'm curious what you and Talia think about in terms of when you're talking to clients about developing habits or you look at, you know, how scientifically, chemically people um, come around to um, habits and things like that. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, I mean, I forget the exact research, but isn't it like it takes 21 days? Leslie, you might even know this. 21 days of doing something consecutively, consistently to create a habit. Yeah, and it's more like 40 days, I think, is kind of what the 40, revealing. Well, I think well, it's 42 points. Everything. Six. Because I give it 21 days and then I'm like, fuck it. Work. Well, <laughs> now I know it's 42 days. But essentially, I feel Three, like two, five. change is really hard. And what you were saying about like people sinking their own ships less is 100% true. And like, we're not working with robots, we're working with humans. And so I feel like this is like a segue into what we were just about to talk about, which is like, humans and neural pathways. And Doug and I work with a lot of people and a lot of couples. And we are programmed, our brains, our nervous systems, every cells of our being are programmed to seek out what's familiar. So if we're born into a family where love looks a certain way, or it's really volatile or inconsistent or scary or hot and cold or overbearing, suffocating, yep. neglectful, whatever that love looks like is what our brains and our nervous systems are programmed to seek out. So it's like we're constantly seeking out more of the same. So without that intentionality and self-awareness, we are doomed to repeat and repeat and repeat. And that's why people sabotage, I think, is because it feels really scary and unnatural to do something that might be better for us. It's like it shoves us right out of our comfort zones. What? Um, so how do we how do we change? I guess I didn't answer the question. I asked it again, but now I'm passing the baton. There you go. I don't know. What do you well, think? Doug, did you want to chime in? Because I can jump in on this one, but I thought, I feel like you're. I do. Thank you, Leslie. Um, this is what I would say about that. You know, I, and I just want to reiterate what you said, Talia. You know, one of the things that we do as, as therapists and, and people have different theoretical frameworks, of course. But my therapies that I do are all about gaining insight on, again, all of the developmental pieces, all of the cultural and, and environmental and other pieces that come into play. But, you know, I just want to comment. Um, I could I didn't answer your question, Greg, and I, I don't I'll, I'll probably get to that another time uh, as we move on to the neurology piece. But, you know, most people are familiar with like, you know, any friends or people they know in their lives where you're like, why would you keep picking that same person? Why would you get out of an abusive relationship and pick another abusive person? And there's so much criticism about that. Again, this is where our brains are neurologically wired to mm -hmm. repeat patterns. And in order to change that, it really does mean doing something different, going to habits and behavioral di differences. It means doing something different, forcing yourself to do it over and over and over for 28.6 days. I'm kidding. I don't oh. know how many days. Um, but really Longer getting into than I do it. And then Seven the, days longer than I the, usually do it. That's right. <laughs> and, and like 12 days less than you, Leslie. But the thing about it is if we do it over and over and over and over, and it, it creates a better experience. And, you know, again, relationships are my easiest way of doing that. If you keep, by the way, my, my clients hate when I usually say, so you're probably picking the same person who resembles somebody in your life who you are trying to establish some resolution with. And the truth is, I was picking one of my parents, I won't get into detail about that, in, in the dudes that I was dating for the longest time. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't work. I better try something different. So, or just stop dating and do something entirely different. But anyway, um, so there's a part of this where I think that's the piece that is most striking to me is that at the end of the day, uh, it is about making sure that we recognize what those pathways probably are and what those patterns are. And again, find some way to do something different on a recurrent basis. Yeah, I I think that Doug, what you, you're talking about is uh, you know, what I work with my clients a lot on is around finding safety and change mm, um, because ooh. we can't. What a lovely word! I yeah, love it. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna feel unsafe and it's gonna feel really uncomfortable the minute you start doing something that you're that's against what your habit has been, against what who you've chosen to date in the past or against how you um, eat um, after dinner, you know, whatever that like thing is that you just do over and over again, that you're like, I know this isn't working for me and doesn't bring me to become kind of the, the to have the life that I really want deep down. Why do I keep 
um, doing this. I don't understand. And the reason why is because, you know, you've got these neural pathways that are like primed for you to keep doing the same thing over again. And in your like animal brain, it feels safer to do that than to do something that is brand new that is more positive for you. And so the key is to figure out how to safely change. And, and so it's really working with like kind of the animal side of yourself. And um, one of the best ways that I really think to do it is first of all, like coming at it from a really positive standpoint, not like, I don't want to be this person, but Mm. more like, what do I want? Like, how do I want to feel? What do I want to be? So you're kind of already generating positive, um, positive feelings around this change. And then I really work with people on really small, small habits. So I don't know if you guys have read the book, um, Atomic Habits or um, Mm -hmm. BJ Fogg wrote a book called Tiny, Tiny Habits, I think. Um, But there's so much research around the effectiveness of really, really small doable changes that feel like I can do this. It doesn't stretch me. It doesn't put me into a fight or flight um, fear response every time I decide I'm going to go work out. So if it, if it's stretching you too far from a nervous system perspective, then you need to dial it back. Um, probably because you need to have something that feels like I can do this and it feels doable. And, and then you build on that and that's how you can be uncomfortable, but still safe. Does that make sense? Leslie, it not only makes sense, but it's such a beautiful way of looking at it because the word safety pervades our work as well. Like, you you know, we create a safe environment for people to explore their emotional um, and other experiences. I love how you framed that. I love Um, it. I I have like a question that isn't even like one of the things that we've ever even talked about, but I'm really curious if you have any thoughts about just like something really simple, like somebody who is addicted to doom scrolling or Mm -hmm. like the social media, like what, how do you make something so big that actually is like people are numbing out. I bet they don't even know they're doing it. And then they blink and it's 2024. Maybe that's what happened to Greg. (laughs) That's how it's going to happen. But then how does somebody make a goal that is so tiny and manageable and not overwhelming about something that they're doing every day, all day, and don't even notice they're doing. Okay. So like if, for your example, for, if you were like, I want to get off of social media, right? Like, and maybe in like Greg, what kind of what Greg was saying, let's say like, you're like, I want to be off of social media totally in uh, two months or I don't know what the time frame would be. Right. Um, you'd start with like, um, it's this idea of like 1% improvements. So mm. you start with like, you know, I, I like to kind of in my mind, I think of it as like the, ti- the Titanic ship where like if they had just <laughs> turned their um, bow of their boat like 1% every single day, they would be on a completely different trajectory than where they ended up being. So oh God, it's like, you I also don't... love that it's like a cautionary tale that if you don't change 1% every day, you're doomed to, to hit an iceberg, die and live a horrible life. Dun, dun, dun. We just went from abundance <laughs> to total death. Yeah. Those are your only two <laughs> options. I'm sorry, so, Leslie, continue. No, I was just going to say that like, so, f- so first of all, like having an idea of like, of where, what you want, like what is, what is kind of the end goal? And then thinking about like, how can you every day um, do a little bit more to reach that goal? So like for social media, for example, um, you could think about like setting, like dialing every day back the time limit that you're doing. Mm. So instead of what people will say, this is what happens in New Year's resolutions. Fuck it. I'm going to like become a brand new person (laughs) and I'm never going to look at my phone at night and I'm going to exercise every day and blah, blah, blah. Right. And it's like a complete overhaul. And so my, like, if I could like have one thing be a takeaway today is that overhauls rarely work. Overhauls might work, but then you're back where you started. And so thinking about like, what is actually sustainable to you on a daily basis? Like, how can you make your, how can you slowly build the habit, whether it's taking away something or adding something in that feels like you're building on itself instead of like a, I start here, I go there. I'm like throwing out all my other stuff that I was doing before. Is that making sense? So like, 
one thing I yeah. would have yeah. people look at is like, also like, when do you do things? Like, what is the emotional cue that's happening before you do, or before you pick up the phone? Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling bored? Are you feeling stressed? Are you just Ooh. feeling like it's fun? I mean, some, you know what, social media can be really fun. And maybe like, you're like, yeah, it is really fun, but I don't want to do it for as long as I'm doing it. So it's this awareness of when you're doing something, what you're, emotional state is what your needs are from that and then what's the little nugget what's the what's the change that you can do that feels safe in your nervous system but it feels like it's 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 a stretch still you're kind of you're changing things but it's doable yeah i you know i've i've found it helpful with clients that you know my coaching clients again i'm not a therapist but um that they it's not just about taking away and to your point you talked about adding we talk about a transition. So you're trying to get more time for this other thing, but you realize that your doom scrolling is problematic. So mm -hmm. let's shift some of that time over. So it doesn't seem like you're taking away as much as I'm reappropriating or I'm moving towards this other place. And that helps them think about this change again, that that's uncomfortable. Um, and I loved what you talk about with safety or change with safety in mind. Yep. But I've also found it helpful, not so much on the personal goals or personal um, ideas, but especially on the business side to, we have a whole conversation designed around getting comfortable being uncomfortable, like recognizing when that friction is in front of you and getting comfortable examining it, thinking about it and not just running away. Right. Um, and I think that, um, you know, safety isn't necessarily about retracting back, but thinking about how you can manage dealing with the discomfort as well as not going too far, right? Yeah, so I, I might I, say about that discomfort is like one thing. I, I mean, I love that. I love that idea. And one thing that I say often to my clients is this is what growing feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you're way too comfortable, you're probably not growing. And so even just to start, if we're talking about pairing, you know, neural pathways into like that bit of discomfort and that bit of push, that's actually what growing feels like. Yeah. I have, yeah. A, I have a comment and a question. Uh, Leslie, you talked so much about like that emotional state, like pay attention to what your emotional state is mm -hmm. as you're trying to pursue that change. Um, and I always tell people when I'm working with substance abuse or addiction in any any sort of way, which when we're talking about smoking, which I want to get to as my next question for you. Um, but, you know, when we're talking about those really difficult things to change, I always use the HALT method with clients like hunger, anger, lonely, tired. Um, and I've argued with some substance abuse people like I'd like to add fear or anxiety in there somewhere because we have to talk about that vigilance or that arousal or that fight or flight response. But, you know, Leslie, I know, uh, as you referenced in the introduction, Talia, you've done some work with truckers and construction work on weight loss and um, smoking cessation, if I understand. Those are like really huge things that almost, mm -hmm. uh, you know, almost all of us experience in some way or shape or form in our lives is something to pay attention to. I'm very curious to hear more about that. Yeah, so I I did. I worked for many years on developing um, um, tests in research. So we would develop a program, we would test it in different populations, and then um, come back and survey and see where they were at, and then do another wow. survey like six months later and see where they were at. And so I used to actually manage coaches from my old one of my old jobs, and we used we developed a program around um, weight loss and tobacco cessation for truck drivers. So we'd go in and we would. Um, weigh these dudes at the truck trucking <laughs> terminals. I would literally be like, okay, step on the scale. What's your height oh and weight? God. Then we'd give them a survey talking about their life. <laughs> and the idea is really looking at, um, and this is one thing I wanted to kind of bring up too around behavior change and lasting changes. You're looking at like, there's an individual component to wanting to make change. And there's also a real environmental component. So like, is your environment set up to support you in mm. uh, maintaining or creating change and maintaining it. And so, you know, when you're work when we were working with people in really um, high stress, um, high risk uh, working environments, it's not fair to just have the onus be on the individual to change. You know, you kind of have to look at what other structures are, wh where are they kind of running against the wind? And so, 
Um, That's good. When that comes down to like how you're thinking about your own change, where can you, um, how can you set up your environment to support you and make it as easy as possible to change? Whether that be like, who do you need to talk to like in your life wow. to help you with supporting? What do you need to um, take out? Um, what do you need to put, bring in from like a, like a physical environmental perspective to help you? Like, so you're not like, trying to figure out if you should do something or not every day you're just like oh this is what's happening because i've i've architected my environment to support me with this so wow. for truck drivers um we used a technique called motivational interviewing and it's um a research-based technique around helping people make positive behavior change really self-directed so it's really not like because what happens in the health and wellness field and i don't know this is like you know you've got guidelines and everyone knows that they're supposed to eat better and sleep better and all that kind of stuff why are people not doing it it's because they don't have like there's not um a feeling of autonomy and um um that they can do it like they can it's achievable these like mm. these choices these daily habits and so um we worked with truckers on um, working with their stage of change. They're, so in the stages of change model, you're in pre-contemplation, contemplation, action, yeah. and maintenance. And like so, addiction. Yeah, I don't know if that's what it, the addiction model is, but it's like really mm -hmm. looking at how you can, um, where are you at with wanting to make a behavior change? You might be in the stage where you're just gathering information and that's just as important as actually taking action. You can't skip through or else it's not going to probably last for you. So like kind of count all the stages as important, like whether you're gathering information and planning or whether you're actually making action on what you wanted to do and, and moving towards your goals. Or if you, if you, if you figured out how to do it, but now you're in the maintenance phase, those are all really important mm -hmm. um, things to consider. And so what I wanted to bring up with the truckers um, is that when this has kind of like guided me in terms of how I think about health and wellness and just change is that people really, where they end up um, not sustaining what they, what, having what they have if they get it is in the maintenance phase. So mm. they'll do all the work, they'll get there, but then usually that's kind of when the program ends, you know? And then they're like, okay, yep. now you're kind of on your own. And I don't know if you feel like you see this with addiction and with other things, but um, we had a program for truck drivers where people, you know, it was so amazing. Like we did the best program and these guys lost so much weight. They stopped smoking. It was very successful. And then, you know, when we did the follow-up survey, we got all this great data. And then six months later, we resurveyed them after they had stopped getting support and they went back to, to, um, ah. no, um, no st statistically significant changes. No, wow. but that's why yep. the new year's resolutions don't work is because people are forgetting about like, once you've actually hit the goal, how right. do you maintain it? I love what you were saying about like the architecting or like, who do I need to talk to? How do I make my environment actually help support this change and this lifestyle? So do you think, is that what happened? Is that without any accountability or community, it all fell yeah. apart. Like what happened? Yeah, I think I think just in general, change is it it, it takes it, it takes a while to change your behavior, and sure. then you have to think about the maintenance around it. Like, what's the plan going to be for you, and what does that mean for you? Like, who are you going to like? What kind of communities are you going to surround yourself with? I think like who you surround yourself makes with makes a huge difference in mm. who you become. So if you want to be the kind of person who exercises regularly, like try to find people that are doing the same kinds of things that you want to be doing, um, that are supportive to you, um, get like your own therapist or coach or somebody that like yeah. to know that yeah. it is like absolutely natural and important to like need ongoing touch points with somebody to help you keep on your way of either maintenance or setting the next like level of growth. And um, the other thing I was going to say is, especially around health and wellness, there is no end point, right? Like, so there are some goals that you can, you can make that like, it's like, you know, you, you checked this off the box, but like what's going to happen with your health and wellness is that 
you're always going to be in your body. You're always going to have things that happen, whether you get sick or, you know, you go through menopause and you start gaining weight or whatever. There's always going to be, or there's, you know, whatever it is, there's always going to be something that's coming up for you. And so it's really important to see it as a journey and as a process and not just looking at, that's where I wanted to go with the, the New Year's thing. There's no end result that you're like, I reached that, done, I'm gone. It's more of like a relationship that you have with yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Leslie, that is, that, that's, that we could not have had a better summary <laughs> of how to approach uh, you know, goal setting and thinking about New Year's resolutions and things like that. Um, I'm so grateful that you were able to find the time to join us today. Uh, thank Isn't you so much for the time. Isn't she spectacular? Leslie, okay, our dearest, most beautiful listeners, if you found value in today's conversation and you feel like Leslie might have something to offer you individually or group or whatever that looks like, where can they even find you? Well, I have this thing called a website. What? That's yes. So in, yes. That sounds so 2024. I on know. The interweb? It's on, it's on the interweb. It's on what was AOL.com. No, just kidding. It's, um, oh so I work one-on-one -on -one with people around not just health coaching, but also life coaching. And I have a group um, program for women around establishing healthy habits. And um, I have a website called www.coachingwithlesley.com. And so it's Leslie, and -E Leslie, how do you Yes. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask you to spell your name because everyone spells it wrong. So could you say that again? Yes. It's coaching with Leslie and my name is spelled L-E-S-L-E-Y. Sweet. There we have it. Leslie, thank you so much for being with us today. This was incredibly uh, helpful and also really inspiring for more conversation. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I really want to thank our listeners in 2022 and our viewers uh, for supporting <laughs> us. And I'm so excited for 2023. I wish everyone a very healthy and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Have a question for Doug or Talia. Email us your questions at questions at we're Eligible questions will be randomly selected for upcoming episodes. For details, visit our website at we'renotfine.com. Join us every Tuesday for new conversations, new challenging topics, and fun.